Hi everyone! So I've had a few people ask me about some tips and tricks and how my experience was getting the pacemaker so I thought I'd just put it all in a video for you. So I got my pacemaker on the 17th of March and it is the 7th of June now so two three quarters nearly three months. Um, it's still quite bruised it was very very <laughs> bruised at the start and it's just a clean cut line and now it's actually turned to a scar so I can show you it's a bit bright in here but um still quite bruised and the pacemaker itself is about here this hard sort of plate in here it's about this big um yeah so uh I thought they'd be giving me a lot of painkillers but uh they only gave me one endone um they didn't even give me a script of Panadol or anything when I left but it's just an uh, overnight stay um the pain itself was fine for me but I've had a couple of <laughs> surgeries and stuff um but I'm sure if you ask for more pain meds they'll give it to you they gave me a lot of ice packs though which was wonderful so <laughs> I really suggest if you're gonna go get a pacemaker to to buy some ice packs before and just put it on top and it just oh it takes away all the pain it's so good <laughs> um so yeah, it was just a, a overnight stay and they they let me go the next day um they just gave me a lot of saline and antibiotics um in the surgery in case anything happened but it was fine and uh, because I was getting it done because of dysautonomia they monitored my blood pressure and they were really really good and it was just they were just wonderful <laughs> so um when I left they gave me this little booklet and you'll get one as well uh, if you're getting surgery they also give you a card saying the type of pacemaker you have and things like that and you have to actually carry it around all the time with you um, but yeah so it just has a whole bunch of you know answers to any questions you have and stuff like that it has things that have like no known risk things that are a little bit and things that you have to really sort of avoid so it says things like you can still have a flashlight you know but be careful around drills and definitely stay away from car battery chargers things like that so um <clears throat> that was really handy <laughs> uh you can basically still do everything you did before you just got to be careful so like uh, mobile phones you got to keep 15 centimeters away from the site uh, same with tattoo machines anywhere is fine but not near the scar as well because you know infections and things but the magnets inside can really screw it up but uh you cannot weld or do chainsaws anymore which is a bit sad I don't know maybe I would have been good at chainsaws <laughs> um but yeah uh, also, before you leave in the hospital, they'll test it out. So they'll put like a, a computer mouse sort of on top of you and it just reads everything that's happening and it feels weird. Uh, it's sort of like the butterflies you get in your stomach, but in your heart. And it made me want to vomit. Um, but I'm used to it now and it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, apparently younger people feel it a bit more as well, but it's fine. Um, also, if you want a bit more information, there's this cool thing called the Pacemaker Club, which I found online, and they have this wonderful book called You Know You're Pacing When, and uh, it says having a pacemaker is no fun, but it can be funny, which I'm all about, and they've got, you know, some cute little drawings and jokes and things like that, and uh, born to be wired, uh, get it, get it, uh... And it says uh, things like, uh, okay, that's not funny. You now have rhythm. Get it? Rhythm. Uh, so things like that can, can really make a difference. Um, so just a little with my experience now. Um, so yeah, the pain was fine. Um, I struggled a bit after the surgery because you're not actually allowed to raise your arm more than a 90 degree angle for a couple of weeks and uh but that means no laundry hello um but yeah that was a, a little difficult and that really hurt and I felt stretching out really hurts and actually still now if I sleep on my side or a stretch or do something like that I find that actually hurts quite a bit in the scar but it's like a superficial not you know underneath not the wires in my heart I don't feel that anymore um but I was still passing out quite a lot, um, which I end up doing about once a day now, 
and that's why I got the pacemaker. So um, this was mainly for bradycardia, but uh, last week I had an appointment with my cardiologist and with the pacemaker technician people, um, and they checked it out, and I had actually had no bradycardia episodes in those two months, but I had had 372 tachycardia episodes. So I have neurocardiogenic syncope, which is the low blood pressure and the low uh, heart rate, but I also have POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. So that tachycardia is the fast heart rate. <laughs> so um, turns out uh, right now my body's going through a phase of a whole lot of tachycardia rather than the bradycardia. So my pacemaker won't actually help me. So um, yeah, that was a bit depressing to find out that all of that uh, I don't want to say it didn't work. It didn't work for me in my needs right now, but you know, he's hoping if uh, my brain freaks out again and the bradycardia gets worse, then my pacemaker will kick in. So that'd be good. But right now, yeah, so um, my specialists are a little confused because this pacemaker was my last resort and it sort of failed me. So, um, but that doesn't mean that it won't work for you. So, don't lose hope. <laughs> uh, and you know, this, this surgery wasn't for nothing. I have to keep reminding myself that. But now it's sort of just like I've got a USB shoved up in there. So everything's been recorded, which is really good. It's sort of like validation. It's like, I told you I was sick, you know, <laughs> which a lot of people struggle with. So, um, yeah, now they can see all of the episodes or attacks, as they called it. And hopefully one day, you know, who knows with technology and stuff, uh, I'll be able to feel a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so I'm sort of the same, but now with a cool scar. So anyone else who's joining, you know, the Pacemaker Club, I'm sure you will be fine. And uh, there's a lot of stuff on the internet, you know, so don't go crazy. But if you look up this Medtronic, these are the people who actually make the pacemakers. So they're the really good information that you can find out, things that you still can do. It says when you can exercise again, if you're allowed to, to exercise, which I'm not. It tells you what to do with the anti-theft systems and if you're in the airport and, and things like that. So it's, it's, really, it's really good and they'll look after you and you'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that's new with me. This is probably going to be the last update because uh, it's not that interesting. <laughs> But uh, good luck, and I'm sure everything will be fine. And thank you for all the, the questions and the well wishes and everything. That's been really, really nice. So thank you. I just have to share some more information. So these are some famous people who also have pacemakers. Uh, James Bond. Well, Roger Moore. But James Bond. Krusty the Clown from The Simpsons. Don't forget that, kids. Elton John, and he's still kicking. Uh, and Earl Backin, who is a co-founder of Medtronic. So that's pretty important. And these are some jokes from <laughs> this wonderful book. You replace words with yours truly with happy pacing when signing letters. Your life has spark. <laughs> a 30-day guarantee is not good enough. You can make love twice in one night. You have maintenance schedules just like your car and someone fancy catches your eye and your pacemaker opens a garage door. <laughs> so, happy pacing my friends. <laughs>